I want to clear some concept of you guys why marker enzymes are very important and what are the usefulness of this marker enzymes in the current research or when you are going to a research lab. So let's start. So marker enzymes. So what do you mean by marker enzymes? Actually these enzymes are not ubiquitous. So what do you mean by ubiquitous? It is not present everywhere. It is very very specific to a or a subcomponent of a cell or you can say organelle. So that's why you can use these enzymes in a particular way to signify a particular subcomponent or organelle of a cell. So these are very useful in isolating or recognizing a particular cell component when you are going to do some specific work of this kind of subcomponents like what do you mean by subcomponents like mitochondria suppose lysosomes nucleus so these are all subcomponents of a cell. Now when you are, you are suppose you are working with mitochondria and you want to isolate mitochondria only. So we have to isolate very very specifically only the mitochondria without any contamination of other organelles or the subcomponents of a cell. That time it's very essential to have a particular marker. Likewise in recombinant DNA technology when you are transferring a gene specifically to a host that time we want to confirm with a selectable marker gene that the gene is inserted and being expressed. Same thing here when you are isolating the subcomponent suppose you are working with mitochondria and you want to isolate mitochondria that time you have to have a marker and that enzyme which is very specific to the mitochondria will be used by you as a marker enzyme. So this is the usefulness of a marker enzyme. So now I'm going to tell you in detail and very very essential marker enzymes which are uh, useful for your CS and net use exam or any kind of biological exams all over the India. So let's start. So first one is cytosol and the enzyme is lactate dehydrogenase so if you are working with cytosol and you have to specifically have the cytosol in your experiment that time you need to confirm the enzyme that is lactate dehydrogenase now okay i'll tell you later let's uh, go for the different types of enzymes then you come for er that is endoplasmic reticulum. So you know ER smooth endoplasmic reticulum or rough endoplasmic reticulum. So for this ER alpha glucosidase is the marker enzyme when you are working with endoplasmic reticulum. You need to recognize this enzyme to confirm the organelle. Next one is lysosome so here you can use acid phosphatase specific for lysosomal isolation next one is paroxysome What the enzyme you can use here? That is catalase. Next one is plasma membrane. So, for plasma membrane, what type of enzyme or which enzyme you should use? Five prime nucleo 
there it is yes five prime nucleotide is enzyme you should you you should be using in recognizing the plasma membrane specifically okay now lysosome peroxisomes now go for the nucleus you can recognize lamin a or lamin c here you can use this lamin things now next one is so you have covered cytosol er lysosomes peroxisomes plasma membrane nucleus so all these things are subcomponent or organelles of a cell that is residing within a cell so you are working with particular subcomponents you want to isolate you have to confirm the marker enzymes so these are useful things now next one is golgi so for golgi you can use glycosyl transferase or sometimes thiamine pyrophosphate is also used So glycosyl transferase or thiamine pyrophosphate you can also use for Golgi. So you are getting two enzymes to confirm the Golgi apparatus. Now the remaining thing is last but not the least that is mitochondria. So mitochondria is very very important part of a cell and here you can have two to three enzymes which will definitely tell you that this is the mitochondria you have isolated. So you, for, you may know that these things can be isolated by density gradient centrifugation, ultra centrifugation. So these are high speed centrifuges and at a different density you can have a different levels of these organelles uh, inside a tube. So let's go to the mitochondria. So for mitochondria, for mitochondria you can use several enzymes, mitochondria. Inner membrane that is IM for inner membrane you can use succinate dehydrogenase succinate dehydrogenase for mitochondrial inner membrane if you are working with mitochondrial OM, then you can use monoamine oxidase. Okay, so here you can use monoamine oxidase. If you want to go for the mitochondrial matrix, then you can go for citrate synthase so these are very crucial enzymes and here you are getting three enzymes specifically as a used as a marker enzymes for mitochondria and also one more thing i forgot that is contractile vacuoles contractile vacuoles for this contractile vacuoles you can use alkaline phospho diesterase so you can use for contractile vacuoles alkaline phosphodiesterase so here i have covered each and every subcomponent of a cell to give you the specific marker enzymes which are used in research or when you are going to isolate a particular organelle. So I hope this class will help you in your research as well as for your CSI UCNET exam. So all the best. So if you like my classes, give a big thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe my channel because these things stimulate me to take futuristic classes for you guys. 
So thank you and be with me.